Welcome to Face the Facts. It's been a long time here, but we are back in the saddle again. I am Nick Face. Joining me to my left today is program coordinator down here at the lovely NorCam studio, Phil Healy. No, how you doing, Nick? Is that one of your best introductions you've had in a while? It's a, it certainly is an introduction <laughs> uh, outside of court, yes. Um, it's been it's been quite a ride since we've been here last with you. I believe it was right before the summer kicked off. Yeah. This is our first show. We'll call this of season eleven. This is the eleventh wow. year of well, Face to Backs, man. Yeah, you've so, had ten years. Like not all here, but you not all here, but in the total, it be started in two thousand six. Yeah, yeah. So we have now been going on the year now for eleven years. I get younger uh, as it as it goes yeah. on. Well, as I think, and you've been, I think, on NorCam for like two and a half. Or yes. Like two, yeah. Yep. Yep. We've started, I think, in 2014. Oh yeah. For, wow. Really? And stuff. So. Wow. That's it, crazy, it, man. Time flies when you're having it really fun. Does. It really does. If some of my friends, family, and other colleagues out there follow me on Twitter or Facebook, I think a lot of people know my stance on how the Red Sox were. Uh, I lost a, a lot of passion and a lot of fire for the Sox from what they had to go through for the 2017 season. Their season came to an end, which was last week, mm -hmm. and it was met with a lot of different scrutiny items on the list. Mm -hmm. There was the whole case where they won 93 games, and it was their first back-to-back -back AL East championship in franchise history. That's a positive. Yeah, that was pretty great. But it was met with... Like I said before, a lot of scrutiny from a lot of the players, management, ownership of this 2017 team. It felt like a soap opera, Phil. I don't know how much you followed along with the team or read up on a couple things that were happening, but there was a lot of things going on that were unacceptable. I read up on, I mean, I knew of uh, the X thing was one of the biggest things of the year. Yep. Uh, the fact that they did win two uh, divisional titles back to back is it's nice. I mean, it's not a uh, bad thing, but it's also you know something I you don't that's you know you don't hang your hat on that the, uh, the whole way. And I think right. that's I don't think they necessarily did, but I think it was it was brought up as more of a kind of buffer for if when eventuality that they exit from the playoffs, correct? Or when you know Farrell. Uh, oh, you just that. said his word. Well, I say it two more times, it'll appear. <laughs> So, I, let's hope not, well, because he's been on my, my hit list for a for while. while. For a while. <laughs> for a while. Yeah, yeah, I think everybody yeah. knew since we've been doing shows here. Um, I've never been in the John Farrell camp. I never have. Yeah. I liked him as a pitching coach when he was with the Red Sox, but I didn't feel that he was suitable for being a manager. I never thought he was able to get his voice across in the locker room. Yeah. I never was a fan of his in-game managing, and I just wasn't, I wasn't, like, it, Love, lo loving him as you could with like a Terry Francona from back in the day. So the Red Sox parted with John Farrell. That was on uh, earlier this week, and like the Red Sox Tuesday, are in the hunt. Yeah. The Red Sox are in the hunt for their next manager. How about that? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. And the names that are coming up, I had no idea they were actually coaching. Okay. Former, like Alex Cora, like former. Yeah, Alex Cora is the bench coach for the Houston Astros right now. Oh, wow, I didn't yep. know that. And then he's also had managerial experience managing uh, the Puerto Rican team from the World Baseball Classic. Oh, cool. So he knows the game. He knows the game. He knows the young players. And I, will, I do want to tell you one of the stories about Alex Cora, which I really like. And it came from, I believe it was a game in 2010 when Alex Cora was a member of the Red Sox. Um, he was one of those utility types. Shortstop, right? Very veteran. You can play short, second short base, second, outfield. Yeah. Uh, pretty much an all-around team guy. Yeah. Alex Cora made a mistake. I want to say it was in the 2000, actually it was the 2007 season. Yeah, yeah. He was going to square up to bunt, and on that play he ended up popping up and getting out and cost the Red Sox a game there. Mm. Now after the game, I'm just going to use you as an example from here. Hopefully that's okay. If you made a mistake like that, would you go and hide in your locker and not want to face the music from the media? Or would you stand at your locker and talk to the people about what happened? Well, I'm a coward, so okay. I would go <laughs> somewhere else. I mean, no, I mean, if you, it depends what you're looking to do, but I imagine... The, the, he stood up at his locker and faced the music and talked to the, talked to the team and the media about what happened and what went wrong. That's an example of what the Red Sox need. They need some, somebody that's in there that can tell these guys to stop being babies. To, to stand up for your mistakes, to go out and be team players, to go out and give it your all, things like that. Sure. And that's what 
I'm looking for in the next manager. I'm looking for accountability. I'm looking for that. Let's not go hide under the little covers here and go hide and duck and get out of town. What we saw this year from the 2017 team, uh, 2017 team, like Phil talked about, we've had the incident with Dennis Eckersley, with uh, David Price having a huge confrontation on a flight um, and getting into uh, a very heated match with Eckersley. We've had Dustin Pedroia. It's not them. It's not me. It's them over there. Situation in Baltimore with Manny Machado. Very weird. Very weird. We've had um, some rumbles between Dombrowski and Farrell with not agreeing on philosophy on how the team's gone back and forth on certain things. And, and it, again, it's a, it was a soap opera. There was something new happening every single day with this team. What I didn't particularly like on this group is a lot led by John Farrell. Now, you can't particularly blame a manager for everything, and I don't. I don't blame him for everything. But what I do blame him for is the certain style of play that the Red Sox did. Their last game, game four, against uh, the Houston Astros. Did you get a chance to watch any of that game? I did. I did actually watch uh, it, uh, pretty much the whole series. Do you know what the philosophy of the Red Sox was when they got on base? Uh, to be, well, they, I could go on to, like, be aggressive, okay. but there's a, I think there's a difference between being aggressive and being stupid. Uh, exactly. And I think. They ran themselves threw. into, I want to say, four outs that were on the bases that could, may have well resulted in runs. If I may jump on to the Ben Attendee, uh, go right ahead. Caught, which, I mean, I, I don't blame, that's such a weird thing to kind of come down yep. on someone for, but, like, he definitely, it, and credit the Astros for, Making a great play yep. on that because, uh, was it? Um, Alex Bregman was Bregman, the third yeah, base, Bregman fired over to first. Ca and caught it right up, like a, a good, a, a decent uh, a hit if Bregman is to his right or left. Correct. Snags it from the, the is right there, snag it, yep. and just kind of torch throw to first to get Ben Attendi, who is leaning and kind of almost on his way to second, has to kind of double back. Now, but, I don't think know. that was the worst no, Benintendi move that he's had either. all season. I don't. But it's a great example of how terrible that he was on the bases. He needed an anchor. Oh, everyone was very, uh, bad. Very bad, yeah. The worst of them all, this was the most embarrassing one to me. Oh, okay. There, there was a hit by Hanley Ramirez. I want to say it was the fifth or fourth inning. Yep. Mitch Moreland, who had a <laughs> broken toe for the majority of the season and is one of the slowest people on the team, Who's known was for being sent real quick, home yeah. and got thrown out by a mile. It was great. Well, it was horrible. But it was, it was the perfect example of just kind of like, what are you doing? Like, now, I don't know if you blame Brian Butterfield, the third base coach, for that, or you go back and blame Dumbo Farrell for this stupid philosophy. I mean, yeah, I understand... It's weird because at that point I would like to think that guy, Butterfield, would just be like, "Yeah, don't." But he all year that's been happening oh, all yeah. year. He, remember back in the day, Wendell Kim. <laughs> yes, I was gonna. The he was race, horrible. God rest his soul. He passed oh, away. He, pass? he did. He did. Did he finally round third and he time? he rounded round third and third? headed to home. Yes. He called out at the plate. In in my eyes, when I was little, I would always, "Oh, here comes Wendell. He's sprinting out to third base. Yeah. He's gonna wave him in, Wendell." Brian Butterfield was worse. He was worse yeah. than Wendell Kim. I, Wendell Kim had some pretty horrible. I remember the ALCS against the Yankees in '99, when there are a couple of things like, "What are you doing?" Yep. Like waving people home, and Kim's like, well, "He almost had that goofy Whatever. like." It's a green light, go. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, their base like all year. The base running was an it, it, it F killed minus them. minus it minus killed minus. Them, minus. Yeah. It killed them. But then Farrell uh, stands up there. Oh, we're an aggressive team. We 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 try our best. We'll run into outs because that that's the way we're going to go about things. The most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it was. I understand. There's a difference between being situationally aggressive and yep. just being blanketly aggressive, because you, you know you're going to get thrown. Like if you do that, you're going to give out. So you are going to give and out. In the playoffs, so that, that's like. See, I'm not one of those guys that likes to sacrifice the out. I don't. Even like bunting and stuff. Bunting is fine so long as it gets a run across. But if you're going to sacrifice a runner to go from second to third base, why? Yeah. A hit's going to score that runner from second base anyways, typically, if you have enough wheels. So I, I, I'm not a big bunting philosophy fan. And we didn't see much of that from the Sox. Maybe you'll see it from the next manager that comes in. Now, before we talk about managerial candidates, 
I do want to ask you what your overall grade of the Red Sox was from this season. Some have been a little harsher on giving them a full-out grade and review. Some have been a little bit more lenient because they won that AL East championship. So thinking about the team as a whole right now, what do you look at for a, for a review or a grade? Great BB plus. Okay. I mean, they won 93 games. They had stretches where they were beating everyone, mm -hmm. and you know, they, the Yankees were no as we see now. And like during the year, the Yankees were a good team. Yep. And when the only thing they needed to catch up with the Yankees were their pitching. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, as you see in this last playoff series against a really good team, mm -hmm. against arguably the best team in baseball, they were able to shut um, that team down. Why do you think that was or is? With the Yankees. The Yankees are, are the Yankees better than the Red Sox? Let me ask you that. If you have, if, if you have starting, well, and let's get back to the Red Sox, like they're starting pitching in the playoffs the last two years. Right. If you have starting pitchers who can go longer than three or four innings, yep. like you have a shot. Correct. And I think the Yankees pitchers, uh, minus I think the first wild card game. Yeah, Severino. Yeah, who yep. was out like. Not even an inning. Yep. Gave up three runs and Which goodbye. Which credit credit Geraldi for just pulling. I mean, what can you do? A lot but, of credit. Yeah. I mean, that he's been getting a lot of it. crap this year, which, I mean, he shouldn't. I mean, he, he shouldn't. Should get. I, I totally agree with you. And Farrell, uh, and I was weirdly rooting for the Yankees against the Tribe. because yep. I, I don't dislike the Tribe, per se, but I still have that grudge from last year yep. a little bit. And it's also, I wanted to see... Yankees, Red Sox, and yeah. ALCS, because so I think I. we could have got it. Look how close we were from that happening. Very, and I very, think, very close. I think the Sox, if you could have made the argument that they weren't the better team than the Astros, they had a chance to beat them. Starting pitching so was B, key, B plus, and I'm very yeah. glad that you brought that up. The starting pitching in the playoffs was abysmal. Yeah. Abysmal. Chris Sale was terrible. Terrible. Yes, he yeah. came in in relief on, the, on game four. He was great then. And I have to tell you, I would never have put him back out for the eighth. He was done in the seventh. Yeah. I mean, you I've, got you got Addison Reed for a reason. You have Craig Kimbrell for a reason. No, Craig Kimbrell is another story, man. He is. He is all over the place. Jason Norcam, Jason here. I think I've said it on the show before. Like him and I, we had a discussion last year. Like I don't know something about. I don't trust that guy when the pressure's on the line. I don't either. Craig Kimbrell. But Addison Reed seems pretty. Jason, you may agree with me on this one, and I'll probably get a thumbs up on this. We missed Koji this year, <laughs> yeah. didn't we? Yep. Oh, Koji's amazing. Koji, someone brought up Koji We really did. I mean, Koji, Koji he was pitching? he's with the Cubs. I don't know if he's oh. on the roster yeah, yeah. Um, for it, but... He's like 87. Uh, he'll still pitch when he's 87 and Probably. pitch effectively. No one will be able to touch him. Yeah. Boy, do we... The, the, the appreciation that I gained for what Koji went through from when he was here with he the playoffs He saved the season. Yes, he did. Yeah. He, was, he was that anchor, and the Red Sox never had that anchor. Um, well, not in my eyes. For a closer, you mean? I don't, what about Papelbon? I think Papelbon. Uh, Papelbon was good when he was when he was do, when he was throwing dominantly 95, 96. Yeah. So I will never take that away from Pap. And you, know, you can never take away Keith Folk. Whenever you go through closers, oh, wow. Folk won it he in did, 04. Yeah. He was single handedly shut down, and he's yeah. he earned a lot of respect in the eyes of a lot of Red Sox fans for what he went through. But yes, you do need a dominant bullpen to go far yeah. in the playoffs. It's very true. Um, but overall, for me, my grade and what I give the Red Sox, I give them a C. Oh, okay. And I give them a C um, due to all of the turmoil that went on for the team. Now, number one reason why I give them a C is I thought they were the most teasable, flawed team that I've ever watched in my lifetime as a baseball fan. There were moments of, of greatness with walk-offs and 17-hour games with the extra innings this season was ridiculous. Um, but I thought that they lacked that big presence in the lineup. Notice how I just used the phrase, big presence. So, but he, he didn't come back like you thought he, he would. He didn't though. come back. He's I was done, ended though. up being wrong on it, and he well, did stay away. They could have used him big time. Yeah. I mean, they could have used... David Ortiz not being a part of the Red Sox and really not being replaced really hurt this team a lot. Because then you had to put Mitch Moreland as your cleanup hitter or Hanley Ramirez, who were absolutely terrible this season. Terrible. Moreland, I, I, I can say Hanley's streaky as all hell. But Holy Moreland, moly. Moreland's not a bad, uh, like, Moreland and Ramirez in the playoffs were actually pretty good. I'll take Mitch really Moreland good. as my eighth or ninth hitter. Yeah, all right. Totally. But when he's batting fourth pretty or good. fifth, that's, 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 that's <laughs> shame yeah. on management. And I'm glad I just said the phrase management because... Mm -hmm. 
there was a lot of decisions that were made from the high ups that wouldn't allow the Red Sox to go out and spend to get additional players. So, yeah, when would that... Uh... The reason for it is because of a penalty. Now, John Henry didn't want to pay this $10 million tax? luxury tax fee uh, because that. over three years they've gone over it. Okay. Um, so they didn't want to go out last offseason and get sluggers like Edwin Encarnacion, mm -hmm. or they didn't want to go out and pay the big money for maybe a big starting pitcher that could have helped the Sox as well. I mean, they, I mean, they got Chris Sale. They did get Chris Sale, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the pitching, I think they were okay with and happy. It was the offense that was not. The offense was not up to standard. So that's what I look at a lot when we want to blame Farrell and everything for things. That's fine. But also Farrell had his hands strapped because they wouldn't go out and spend to get the money or to get the players that could possibly help this team out a lot. Sure. So you had to use the likes of you know, a Moreland or a Hanley all the time or not having as much third base production until Devers came up. I mean, that was a big problem. You know, they put a lot mm -hmm. of their eggs in one basket with Sandoval to start the season, and we all know the story of how that turned out. He so, went back to the Giants too, didn't he? Yep, and did you hear about what he did at the end of the season? Well, someone was telling me. I think I read uh, he... He hit a walk-off home run, yeah, and first... it cost the Giants the number one pick huh. in the 2018 draft. Oh, no. Well, so, you thank go. you, Pablo. That made a lot of us very happy to hear wow. that you were able to do something that atrocious Seems for your about team. it. Seems about it. Let's talk about the managerial options, because we have a void okay. on, um, I don't know if this yeah. is going to stay for long, on Yaki Way. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's another time. topic for another day, but what? Oh, oh, we're changing the oh, name the on big it. Poppy, yeah. right? The, the changing the name on it to uh, whatever it is, but... Oh, That's enough. It? They're talking about well, it. Yeah, the well, owners don't want it as Yaki Way anymore. Why don't they want it as Yaki Way? Because they feel like Tom Yaki back in the day was a racist, and they well, think I mean, that he could. He you could you make can't. The you can't rewrite history. No. You just can't. You know. You, you can, can make, make the, the argument. argument, but we also have to realize too that the reason that that street is named Yaki Way is because of the Jimmy Fund. With oh, all the donations that? and everything oh, okay. that the Yaki Foundation has Never given. Up. So that's the reason why it's there. And that's, in my eyes, that's why it needs to stay. It's a permanent I thing. I mean, that actually is a, a more... It's been multi-millions of dollars that have helped save people's lives. That's, that's, a more, that's a more solemn reason I thought you were going to throw out there. Because, yep. I mean, I mean, you could... I mean, obviously, you could argue the Yaki uh, beyond the foundation or just like they just made... They made that team. And they right. actually... I mean, the Red Sox were the last team in baseball that um, put in... Um, an African-American player yeah. and all. So, yes, you can, you can say all you want about it, but the number one reason why that street is that way is because of the Jimmy Fund. So please make sure, folks, when I you mean, are hearing all the scrutiny about you, yeah, the, the naming, take that account, then sure. please take that into consideration because the other people in the media are just not. They're not talking about it enough. They're talking about, oh, well, he was a racist and a bigot, and, yeah. that's, and that's unacceptable to have there. So. so, would you accept a, sl a Yaki slash Big Poppy way? No, I want to leave it the same. Really? I do want to leave it the you same. You seem to be yeah. more of a obstinate kind of. Yep. No, I want to leave it the same. I'm I'm a, I'm one of those people that you can't you can't rewrite history from, and I I have a well, deep appreciation. Can't. There's for... a difference between rewriting history and just acknowledging. Um, there is a event. difference. Because yeah. I mean, I think there's uh, to someone who would have like a more nuanced look of it, like, oh, this is. Uh, this is, I mean, this is how things went about with the Yaki's. This is how they operated. Yeah. And like, whether or not we're in a in a place where it's less society, uh, like as a society, we don't, uh, we don't really appreciate the mode of which they went to. Just like the same yeah. way you can make, you know, not to drag the Celtics into this because I always want to and I will. Yeah. Um, Bill Russell's treatment. Yeah. And just kind of like when he was first around here and just the. Uh, uh, stuff that was piled on. I him. would say he would know firsthand about a lot of things. Oh, of course, yep. and he's a very wise, uh, kooky and wise uh, old uh, old soul. Yes, but, uh, but uh, all the same, I that actually is a more your reason for keeping it is actually more uh, solemn and more kind of heartfelt than I. Uh, Sometimes I uh, shock you, Phil. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do think I do think like just one. I think there is that tinge. I mean, you did admit it that just to keep it as is. Yep. For the sake of keeping it as is. And I understand levels of that, but, you know. If they want to change the name of the street, just put it back to its original street name. And do you know what that was? What was that? Jersey Street. Oh, really? Yep. Jersey Weird. Street. 
No, that's a good point. I so, mean, bring it all the way back. Just bring it back to that. Too, well, so. I mean, but in case in point, what we're, we're getting to, we're like, getting to uh, the managerial yeah, options. True. We have an we have um, a void now in that dugout, yeah. and there are a lot of names that are going about. So I guess it's our time to talk about some of those names and see what you might like out there. So we've talked about Alex Cora. Okay. He's yeah. definitely high on my list. I kind of I like I always liked him as a player. Like, and he, yeah. he hit the thing that that really uh, teed me off was when. He left to play for Cincinnati. Is that? Uh, and then he was like a power hitter for like he hit like twenty home runs. Or he something. went somewhere where after he was done and was it was hitting a little bit more out. But I think yeah. that sometimes has to do with ballpark dimensions a you little know, bit. That's a fair point. I mean, look at Yankee Stadium. That's a band yeah. box. Yeah, you can get up is. there and every I'll hit forty home runs a season. Yeah, exactly. No, I really wouldn't. And but if you're I'm six eight, it doesn't no. it doesn't hurt. My next option, the yeah. one that I want the most out of them all, this is the one that is my favorite and I hope that can come back to town, is Gabe Kapler. Gabe Kapler. The reason I want Gabe Kapler is, is a few things. Number one, he's already been here and he knows yeah. the system and he knows how to manage uh, a baseball team. He's managed Team Israel in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah, I was going to say, and he the, is the first Jewish... Um, uh, uh, first Jewish manager from that. Right, and in yeah. Boston, I think. I don't know. I don't know if uh, around the league, but possibly in Boston. I don't know. Could be in Boston. Yes, yeah, you're right. Cool. Um, and if uh, back to Alex Corey, he would be the first um, uh, Dominican native that could be oh, a manager, cool, yeah. too, for that, too. Yeah. So uh, back to well, on Kapler. I like Kapler for a lot of reasons. It was his no-nonsense type of attitude. Um, he, he's almost like that enforcer type. He is, he is ripped beyond belief. And I think that that would have a lot of players think twice about what they want to talk to their manager about. So kind of like that fear of God, in a way, sure, old into, your, into, God, into, yeah. your, uh, into your dugout, I think, can work. He's very good at communicating. Yeah. He's a team player. He was there for 04 and helped the Red Sox yeah. win that World he Series was, championship. Yeah, they brought him on midseason, right? Yep. Yeah. yep. Actually, he outfield, came but... in in 2000. Uh, he was there in 03. Oh, okay. He was yeah, there yeah, in 03. Right. Okay, all right. Yep. And he was like and, a mid-season. And then yeah. he was playing left field, center, right. Yeah. But always was known as that, you know, uh, hard-nosed, no-nonsense, get the most out of it uh, when you're out there, no-nonsense type of attitude. Yeah. And I think that Kapler would do a lot of good being the manager here. Now, they were talking on Felger and Maz yesterday about why uh, Kapler may not be the best option, and it's that – he doesn't like to joke around enough with his players. Because he's he, who's he it, in it now? Who's he? Uh, he's with the Dodgers oh, minor the Dodgers. league affiliate, I believe, oh, the okay. uh, AAA Dodgers. Oh, good for him. And they had another good season there. But I, I, I don't necessarily agree with the comment that Felger and Maz had to say on that. I, I Your manager see, yeah. is supposed to go out there and put your best ball club out there. Yeah, you can have some laughs along the way, too. But that shouldn't be the number one most important thing on the list. No, do you think he could adapt, too? Yes, absolutely can yeah. adapt. So he knows thought. the culture here in Boston. He knows the players. He knows yeah. how to communicate. He's uh, very high on my list as the manager. Now, there's some other options that are out there, too. Um, the other one that I'm, I'm big on is Jason Veritek. And I've always been a tech guy. I love how he's been. The, was the captain for the Red Sox. He knows the pitching staffs all the time. Kept his notebooks on exactly how to pitch certain guys. He's a leader, born leader. Mm -hmm. he, he demands that respect level. He has been here for hundreds of times. And he also was a special advisor with the team, and he's been in the dugout already. So he knows a lot of the players that are here now, too. What do you feel on Veritek? Oh, I don't I mean... He's been around the system for years. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he's a staple here. I think that's a good fan choice. I mean, his experience, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Would that be an issue? Maybe. But his experience, he's been a player. Like, Joe Girardi didn't manage a team. No, he didn't. Oh, no, he managed. I'm sorry. No, he did. He managed uh, the Marlins. Yes, he did. But That was I his mean, first managerial then, job. Like, and he won a championship with him yep. against his former team, actually, which is kind of fun. Uh, but, like, before then, he was a catcher and... He saw it all, and as a catcher, I imagine you see everything. It's like you are the yeah. kind of... You see a lot head. of guys who were yeah. catchers that were in the league transition really well into the dugout yeah. as a manager. Uh, Socha, was he a catcher? Socha was a catcher. Yeah. Mike Matheny was a Matheny, catcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah, A.J. Right, Hinch yeah. for the Astros was yeah. a catcher. There's a lot. Um, and another one that was, too, why am I drawing a blank on it, is... Um, Brad Osmus, who just oh. got tossed, who's another option for the Red Sox as well. Oh, all right, yeah. 
So no, I, you see a lot of former catchers okay. step right in. Well, they have to go through everything with the pitchers. They pretty much they know take, the game. Yeah, they know the game. They know the game. They have to go. They have to really analyze it through and through. So my biggest downfall with Veritek again is that he doesn't have that pure managerial experience yet. Yeah. But I think that that's okay. I think that even though Dombrowski came out on Tuesday and said that he is looking for somebody who has the experience, I would say Tech has experience. He's been in the dugout. He knows what's going on, and I think he could step in there and do a lot of good. Are there any other candidates that are out there that you are like, I want to see get interviewed or pass a test? I mean, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure who's available, so yep. I couldn't really... Uh, I know there's really one know. other person who they were saying yesterday um, already had an interview, and that's Ron Gardenhier. He used to be the Twins oh, manager. Yeah, yeah. He was the bench coach for Tor uh, Tori Lavulo, yeah. who would have been my number one choice he to would, take yes. over 100%. But he's in the minor league system in... No, no Tori was the Diamondbacks manager. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's right. That's so right. he when that was last year when him. he came in. He yeah. did great this year with the yeah. Diamondbacks. Ron Gardenhier was his bench coach. Okay. So Gardenhier has that experience. He's got the twins to a lot of different uh, championships and all. Never yeah. won a World Series and didn't no. really do much in the playoffs. Did they get um did he bring them to the World Series? No, I never did. No. But they went He already has interviewed. So yeah. they are saying that he's one of the finalists right now. I kinda don't like warm, that. Kind of lukewarm. I don't like that. that. I, he's kind of like sexy, that. I guess if you could, if I'm going to go to. I know he's good with the clubhouse with players, but I don't think that he would fit well with the Red Sox. That's okay. just my overall opinion on that. Mention Brad Osmus. Brad Osmus was relieved of his duties from the Tigers this past year. And Dombrowski, yeah. Dombrowski was Dombrowski. the first one, the first guy who hired Osmus back with the Tigers. Would he do it again? Possibly. I mean, he seems to, well, I mean, who has he really brought over from his last regime? A lot. He has, yeah. David Price. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I David guess, Price yeah. was with him. Um, who else has he brought in? He's brought in, uh, they've always had interest in a couple of other their players there. Now, one of yeah. the free agents who's going to be available this summer was a Tiger, and I think the Red Sox going to be red hot on him. That's J.D. Martinez. Okay. He played on the Tigers, so I think Dombrowski will have the upper hand in that negotiation there, too. Um, I, I am not Osmus type. I don't, I don't think that he would fit in well. Detroit is one of those kind of uh, pressure cities where there's a lot of uh, eyes on the game of baseball. There's more eyes in Boston on baseball, and there's a lot of fans that will watch the manager and pick and chew him out mm -hmm. on exactly what to do. I don't think he has the uh, mental toughness to last here in Boston for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, Never know until you put in front of it. But. There are other names. I'm just. I'm not going to go into a, a big discussion on it, but Sandy Alomar Jr., first base coach for the Indians. He's oh, an really? option. Um, another option is the Red Sox trading to get a really solid manager type in. A couple of those names that have been, that have been floated out there are Bruce Bocci from the Bruce Giants. Okay. Sure. We also have Don Mattingly's name thrown out there from the, uh, the Marlins because the Marlins are looking to really do a rebuild. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that Derek Jeter, who is now the own, one of the owners of the uh, Marlins, I don't oh. know if you knew that. No, I did not. I don't think that he particularly wants Mattingly in there anymore. Yeah. Um, Dave Roberts out with the Dodgers. I have heard right, about he's Dave doing Roberts, really, yeah. really good things out there. That could be another option. Um, and I'm also hearing Mike Matheny as another option with the Cardinals. Now, I'm not big on the Matheny front. So. Bocci is not a bad Those I are mean, some potential that names seems like that are like kind of thrown an outside out there. source. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, you also have John Farrell's bench coach. I wouldn't be surprised if this happens either. Gary DeSarcina. Yeah. I don't love the move. I don't think he's ready to manage a major league team. I think he needs more experience in the minors to get that job. But those are options there. Yeah. Free agents. Now, the Red Sox have a lot of work to do. Could be free agents, could be trades, could be parting ways with certain people. Are there any people or any players on the Red Sox that you feel should be safe from being traded? Oh, I mean... That outfield. I mean, I, some of my closest buddies would like get rid of Bradley, but I would love to keep Bradley, Ben Attendi, Mookie. Okay. And then I would love to keep that core. And Devers, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I like to think of Mookie, uh, Ben Attendi, Devers, uh, Xander, and Bradley are safe, but you never know. Okay. I mean, I, 
It, the, so that would be on your highest of lists. Highest of lists for those people being safe. I mean, Chris Sale there. Yeah. Um, Jason, you want Kimbrel traded, correct? <laughs> Again, the thumbs yep, up. Yep, thumbs up. Uh, yeah, I, I think huh. so high. I mean, he might not be at his highest now, but so high and try to get a package of posi uh, position players and move Addison Reed to closer. Okay. Or um, or try to put like Joe Kelly, or even if you don't like David Price as a starter, move him to your, move him to a closer. Thirty well, thirty one million dollars for for David Price in the bullpen. <laughs> They've been worse. They've been worse things. Why don't you just trade him? Uh, if you could, I guess. I mean, I think I mean, uh, one question I wanted to ask you, you made some good points about mm -hmm. a fear of God with Kapler as a possible manager and other possible managers putting the fear of God in the players. Mm -hmm. Do you think the players won now that Farrell's out? And that's yeah, I, I do. Think, yeah. Oh, I do. Do yep. you think that's a good or bad thing? I think that's a terrible thing. Yeah. That's why this clubhouse, this team has to change. Yeah. So the names that you were mentioning, I hope you don't, I hope you don't love them. <laughs> I hope you don't. Well, I don't think I don't think they're trouble. You're gonna, I don't you're think you're going to have an entire. It's it's going to be the Boston Celtics. Oh, I was going to say. I hope it isn't that. We have. We, there's going to be a tremendous amount of turn uh, of turnover. Yeah. Tremendous. I hope not with those because I mean I think they're. Well, actually, I'm going to well, well, name you the yeah, guys that oh, you, you think, think that are out. Okay. No, I'm not. Oh, th not that, no, that's no, a no, long no. list. Okay. I'll give well, you the short list. Give me the short. I'll list. give you the list that will be the keepers. Mm -hmm. Christian Vasquez, catcher. Okay. Hundred percent staying. Okay. Chris Sale, hundred percent staying. Sure. I mean, He'll I be here. Yeah. Devers, a hundred percent staying. Mm -hmm. Untouchable. Um, now it gets now it gets a little complicated. Really? A little ben Attendee, bit. not even Ben Attendee. I think that the Red Sox, if the right deal comes along, they would deal him. Oh, but Ben Attendee is one of the ones that I would keep on the list so long as they don't go out and do a big trade. Okay. Mookie Betts is also one of my keepers. Yeah. So that's five. There's 20 more spots in this team. Sure. I mean, I didn't. My list wasn't that bad. I mean, I pretty much. Uh, did you notice my starting rotation too? Oh, what just? Who uh, did I name? Just Chris Sale. Or just get rid of everyone else. I just named Chris Sale. I mean. So that means my list with Pomerantz, Rodriguez, yeah. Porcillo, Fister. Yeah. David Price. If you have the option, now I think the Red Sox are going to have to keep Price, and that's a bad thing because this is why they must have Gabe Kapler come in because they need someone to stand up. Hey, David Price, you're not going to talk to Dennis Eckersley that way. If you do, you're not pitching. Go sit over there. Mm -hmm. See, the problem in, in all of professional sports is that the manager job is one of the least paid gigs that's out there for managing multi-million dollar players. That's the problem, because a, 30, a $300 million player versus a $1 million manager, who do you think has the upper hand in that, th in, in that negotiation? As far as... What, who says goes? Well, who says, I mean, as far as the upper, be like, well, he's got to play, he's made, blah, 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 but we're paying him less much. You don't sure. think that player's going to look at John Farrell, for instance. I'll pretend I'm David Price. Mm -hmm. You pretend you're John Farrell. Hey, John, I'm going to go out and pitch. What would you say? Whatever you say, David. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. Well, you got I don't to, like Dennis Eckersley, John Farrell. Why don't you hang out with them a little more? You'll get to know them. Exactly. I don't think so that's they, a bad, but I don't they think that's a bad hold, tactic. To they hold. Tell them to get to know them. Exactly. They should get to know them. No, and they should, think, they should understand what respect that, is. That was pretty uh, diplomatic, I think. They should understand what respect is, and unfortunately they don't, and I think Kappa would get that out of them. I think they need, I think they feel so that's my list. the other way. Yeah. That, that's my list. My list is very short. The ones I would part with 100%, and you mentioned Bradley first offhand. And I could so see him being... My, my blood started to boil a little well, bit. Well, I, but I, like that core, because I can see, he, listen, he's one of the best defensive outfielders I will never out take there. that out of his hands. And I think, no. like, is and he's a streaky mf -er as far as like hitting goes. Yes. And that's the thing. Like if you can live with that and you know what you have, I mean, because and that's a point where I think as Boston, they <laughs> say you're just waiting for it. Uh, but no, as a Boston sports fan and a Sox fan too, I think our greed over exceeds uh, reality. We're in the, you know, you could get a center we're, field. We're dreamers. Of course. <laughs> but I mean, and that and part of the the fun of talking about this stuff is like. Yep. You know, um, putting once again back to the NBA, putting the other super teams. Yes. And Bradley isn't necessarily the best hitting no. center fielder. 
And if anything, this playoff uh, series would let you know. Now you're gonna like this. Okay. You're gonna like what I, what what my what the parting gift is gonna be with Bradley. You're oh, gonna well, like it. What do, you, what do you think? And this is why I didn't put Benintendi on the keeper list because you're gonna have to part with him to get this so player. So it's a package. To it's get a package Stanton? to get some. There it is. Yeah. Yep. I mean that's not Stanton's, a Stanton's gonna be here. I, I, I'm convinced he's gonna be here for it would 2018. Would have to be in a trade. Is that what? Yeah, it I would have to be in a trade, but you don't have a thumper in your lineup anymore, and that killed the Red Sox. Yeah, I mean, Hampton what other the power closest. bats out there would be available and make the most sense inside of Stanton? There's not many. I mean, you could go back to Adrian Gonzalez. You could. Because the Dodgers he... actually don't want him there, but the Red Sox, That's true. he's That's already true. burned that bridge from being there. Well, There's a couple are... names that. Stanton is number one on my I list. I mean, Trout is another guy, but... The, uh, that's my other sleeper, because Trout has been with the Angels now five years, and the Angels have done diddly squat out there yeah, for a long yeah. time. Is it time for the Angels to rebuild? I think it might be. So would the Red Sox part with... Now, here's my next question I have for you. Mm -hmm. how, un how untouchable is Mookie Betts? No one is ever untouchable. But, I mean, it would take a lot. Would you trade Mookie Betts for either Stanton or Trout? No, because I'm um, for Stanton. I guess. How about for I guess Stanton? Have to. How about for Stanton? I mean, I guess you'd have to. I mean, I'm more of a sentimentalist, so I mean, I wouldn't yeah. really. I like Mookie a lot. I mean, that one would sting me a little bit. Sure. Because Stanton hasn't been as consistent as somebody like a Trout. But and who and how and Mookie's pretty young and how old Mookie's is twenty six. Twenty six. How old is uh, Carlos? 28. Two yeah, years? Two years. Um, and let, is he injury prone? I forget. No. So, I mean, say like you have another three or four good year, yep. batch of years with him. Not horrible. How's his defense? Good. Because he's, no, he's not an outfielder, is he? Yeah, he is. Oh, okay. Yep. So that's why I'm mentioning the outfield. Because I mean, that's not. I would see Stanton coming to, red, to the Red Sox and playing left field. And then you'd switch Bradley over. Or and it would depend over. on who gets traded. If yeah. if Bradley stays, he's in center. If yeah. if uh, Benintendi stays, he's in center. If Mookie stays, he's either in right or center, depending on if Bradley or yeah. Benintendi go. So it's one of those options that, that that's out there. Uh, the one I would never have any doubts with, if they wanted Benintendi and Betts together, mm -hmm. I, would, I would do that for Trout, 100%. Trout, Trout, Trout is a superstar. Yeah. He's a five-tool player that can do a lot of good for your yeah. team. He's not and a bad. I, I just, it's always, I mean, I'm the same with the Celtics. It's, it's a sentimental thing. Now, let's move in the infield. Okay. Now, I know that you mentioned Bogarts is a keeper. I think Bo is eight. I mean, I think he has too much upside, but, I mean. What upside, though? Uh, well, I, I think he can <laughs> explode at any moment. And I also, maybe, and maybe you do lose, um, lose him because, like, you've been waiting for him to be more consistent. Here's a question for you, too. You've watched the playoffs this season, right? I did, I did. Have you watched the Yankees? Uh, yeah. Before the, season, before the season started, mm -hmm. let's say it was the beginning of 2017 right now, and you offered Xander Bogarts for Didi Gregorius for the Yankees, would you have done that deal? I mean, I guess. I mean, Didi's also younger, isn't he? Or now let's say age. this. Now let's say this. Before we do the younger, younger mm -hmm. uh, comparison. The Red Sox offered Xander Bogarts for Didi Gregorius. What would the Yankees do right now? What would they do right now? What would they do with that move? What would they tell the Red Sox? Oh, go... Uh, go pound rocks, Yeah, right? go urinate up a rope. Didi Gregorius has totally outperformed Xander Bogarts. Totally. In another, atmosphere, in another whole land he's in. And yeah. that's shocking because when he first came and replaced Derek Jeter, mm -hmm. he was a nothing. And he has totally torched it with the Yankees. Xander Bogarts is on the regress, sadly. Xander Bogarts is not strong enough to be a Red Sox shortstop. He's yeah. not strong enough to last here with playing in, the, in Boston. Xander Bogarts needs to be with the Tampa Bay Rays. What do you mean strong enough? I mean mentally strong enough. Yeah. He's not. I think, that, I think that he's one of the... But he's shined in one of the him, largest... Him, Rodriguez, stadiums. and Price have three things in common along with Bradley, that get under my skin more than anything. And that's because they're soft. They aren't tough enough. They don't go out there. They don't have the mental fortitude to go out and to play at their strongest level of physical baseball activity. Eh, I, I think that's more like a sweeping under the rug of the actual nuance if you actually just kind of stay with these people and work with their talent and 
not let their egos get in the way of their talent. That you How can... long has Bogart's been here since? He's been here since 2013. 2013. Yeah, that's when he came in. He, he I mean, he came in. Uh, he uh, hit well he's in done. the playoffs. No, because other because there've been other seasons he'd been he'd done pretty decently. I just think it's a matter of, I don't know, maybe set him on the straight and narrow. And he's never not been under John Farrell, so I mean you don't know what he's like under another manager. Now I like that point. I like that point. So now maybe somebody who has, is a stronger manager type can get the most out of him. But I also think like when you talk about Kapler, one of the pitfalls of that, if you have someone just yelling or being put of the fear of God and something, sometimes it just you know, red on red doesn't register. And people are like, yeah, whatever. And they'll just write you off. And then if you don't play, you don't play. And it's just more detrimental to everything else. Right. You got to have, like, Tito was great at managing the players and seeming like an ally in the same sense of, um, but also maintaining he was, he, he went He went both ways. He was good with both ways on leading his team. Sure. And that's what you need for a manager, too. You yeah. need to have a little bit of give and go. Um, and who knows if Farrell necessarily had any i mean you don't know you just don't know that much i mean i guess but price is one of those guys who i can definitely see if you're like you know like you said you can't necessarily get rid of him because of the salary but he's a guy definitely you could you could work with and feel like hey you're pitching out of the bullpen you're doing if he doesn't care it's like eh, well now the last the last couple names that i i, I want to name but bogarts i think i don't know but you could get i mean i guess well, you, could you, you have to see what you can get on certain things there now i know that he would not be um, offered very, you wouldn't get as much of a package for Bogarts right now as you no. would that if he stuck out for next year and he played it to his full potential, yeah. then maybe you could get more on it. Or even like 75% or 80. Dustin Pedroia, what do you think? Oh, he's got to go. Okay, we, we agree. Um, I love Dustin Pedroia, and that'll be something in my mind where he's one of the, he, he is what a Red Sox player. Like well, in his day, and I talked to Jason the oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, oh nine. Yeah. Even yet, when he was coming up, and just like for such a long time, such a heady uh, and gritty player. And uh, was it Ozzie Gian who said, you know, the game would be a lot better if everyone played like Dustin Pedroia. Yep. Which is uh, you know compliment of compliments. But uh, maybe after that injury to his um, was it to his, his knee? His knee, yeah. yeah. I mean, he definitely, and he's also getting, I mean, he's like, what is it, 31 or? Dustin Pedroia is 35 years 30, old now. Oh, wow. Jeez. So, I mean, he's breaking down, and he just, he can't, he doesn't have the same mobility. He doesn't have that same reach with his bat or speed. And it just, case in point, this playoffs, and last year's playoffs, like, him and, he's not going to, he, he couldn't move, he had one out, and base was loaded. And you couldn't move. You couldn't move anything around. He keeps a bat on his shoulder. He couldn't foul off a close pitch. No, and it's just kind of like that's what you need. To, Brett Gardner is a great example of watching that game was crazy. Yep. He had like a twelve pitch at bat against a pretty good reliever. Grind. Yeah. And it just yeah, uh, Pedroia was one of those guys. That was one of his specialties. What made him great. So here's a good question for you because I keep asking myself and this it question sucks. a lot. Just thinking in that term. But, it does. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. What What happened to Dustin Pedroia? What happened? I think he. he, he Age is catching up. He and seems like he's a, he seems like him. he's a bitter old man now. I think that's part of it. Maybe he just like feels like no one listens to him. Okay. I don't know because at one point I think he. If you were one of the young guys, voice. let's say you were Devers, yeah, and you saw, had walked into the clubhouse and and you talked to Dustin Pedroia, do you do you think they're listening? I don't know, and maybe he's not talking to them. I mean, I think there's another... You don't know that either. That's true. I think there's another aspect of it. Maybe he just does the stuff and leaves. Like, gets in, gets Might. it, gets out. So, uh, I mean, Dust Dustin Pedroia has definitely worn out his welcome on me. Um, I was the biggest of fans of him when he was first with the Red Sox, came up in 06, struggled, and then 07 he came up and helped the Red Sox win that championship. Yeah. He's got to go, folks. He's got to go. I he mean, he's got four years left in his deal. Yeah. It's terrible. No one's going to take him. He had a great year last year, too. He did have a good playoffs. year last he had year. A really he great really year. did. And, you know, I, he had a decent year this year, I think, too. Decent, yep. But I think he's just worn the welcome out, kind of yeah. like how that Nomar plateau went in 04 when they got Nomar yeah. out of here. Um, I think this is worse than the Nomar. I think this is worse. I mean, their timing might have passed. Yep. But uh, I don't know. I think it could be worse. Now, the other one is Hanley. I just don't see anybody taking on Hanley Ramirez, so I think you're stuck for another year with yeah, him. Yeah, and I don't exactly. think that's a bad thing to be stuck with Hanley. If you get another A motivated Hanley is a good Hanley. 
he had an a great unmotivated playoff. Hanley is an awful Hanley. We yeah. saw a motivated Hanley in the playoffs. Yeah, I thought he was great. I thought he was great. I thought it was weird that he didn't. I understand they were playing the matchup game, but I mean, he um, it was horrible. They wasn't in the lineup. He had a good playoff. He had great play. He had, a good playoff. He, he had like he batted. What was it like five to six hundred? Yep. It was crazy, man. After being inserted after nuts playing in game. Yeah, yeah. Like, after like the first at bat, Nunez goes down. That was not. He actually was a great pickup too. He was. But, and I do hope that they bring him back so long as he's healthy. Yeah. He added a he lot did. of fire and spark to the team, which they needed. That kind of yeah. Him and Devers together were that fire that kept on going. When those yeah. two were out, or when Nunez came out, the fire went out. Yeah. So hopefully they know that and they can put Nunez back with the team. Um, very quickly, we want to wrap up our Red Sox uh, segment right here. Mm-hmm. I know how much you enjoy the Celtics, and I wanted to talk about them before we wrapped everything up. Yeah. We'll cover the Patriots and the Bruins and other stuff on our, on our next episode. But, boy, is it an exciting time to be a Celtics fan. Yeah, it's confusing and exciting It time. is confusing. You don't <laughs> yeah. know what you don't know if it's a, it, it, what's, gonna, what's expected yet. But yeah. I will tell you this, at least on my eyes of it, I absolutely love this roster that's put together. It's a crazy roster, man. It is crazy. Have you watched any of the preseason? I stuff? have. Yeah. Yep. And I've been laughing a lot, too. Oh, really? Yes. Just... Especially on that first game with Tommy Heinsohn. Oh, of course. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I with Baines? My... Did you hear that no, comment? No, with... What did we say with Baines? Oh, boy. So Tommy was uh, oh, doing the broadcast. Uh, we might need the FCCs on this. No, I'm only, oh, I'm no. only kidding. So, um,. Tommy was talking with Mike on the side, and he was talking about, oh, well, Baines is really, uh, really good there. I saw him in the shower. He uh, looks like he brought all of Australia with him. So, you didn't hear that? No, that's pretty great, though. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty great. So, anything for Tommy was great. So, that got the season off to a really good note. Baines has a good uh, jump shot, too. He's, yeah. um, and that's, I guess, the biggest uh, question for them. is. Uh, Let's not use the word biggest anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kidding. Well, uh, uh, Big Man. Yeah. Big Man is what, oh, there you go again. Yeah. Uh, one he's going to help the team out a lot. Yeah, the main concern was, like, yeah. not having a Big Man. And he's, yeah. you know... And having a jump shot like that, having like a Tim Duncan esque type of jump shot, right? And especially that first preseason game, watching, watching that, I don't know how I missed that comment, but uh, or like I mean, oh, it's a, it's a, you're gonna have to go Google yeah, that when you're done. That's yeah. crazy. It was hysterical. He is, I mean, he is in his eight, oh yeah, I think he's in his eighties and he's still kicking, which is yeah. great. I'm glad that Tommy gets to do the home games, no matter how ridiculous. Yeah, it is. He, it, he it's it, it's laugh out loud. But yeah, he's but I mean he's with it enough. It's just a matter of like time, like Pedroia's or time passing by. But the Celtics lineup is not. Kyrie Irving is a great player. Who do you like the best out of the team right now? Before they begin, who do you like the best? Oh, I love Kyrie Irving. Okay, I love him. Like I love his game. I've always loved his game, whether I hated him as a person or not. You don't have to hate him anymore. No, you, it's it's well, weird. As another, yeah. But I don't care for him. Like whether it's true or not, which I'd love to ask him. Uh, truthfully, are you a flat earther? Because if it is, you're playing a game with a ball. Yep. That's a sphere. But, um, so I, I don't know. I, I love Irving. Uh, We're going to really like Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward, I enjoy. I got, I'm waiting on that because I like, I want him to play some D. Okay. Now, that's the kind of thing I want to see back and forth. I want them all to play some D. I think that's going to be the toughest thing to get them all to play D. Uh, some Because that was the thing. Avery Bradley was our defender. Hundred percent. A lot of defenders. Marcus Smart is actually one of the best defenders on the team. Yes, I know he you're is. not a big Marcus Smart fan. Well, I, I, you know what? I, I've I've kind of gone back onto the the whole thing because yeah. I, for the longest of time, thought Marcus Smart was going to be traded. No, I think and a lot here. of people did, and, and he, he's here, and it he was put up uh, on the block. I, I a thought of times. that Bradley was going to be one of the cornerstones that was sticking, and when Bradley got traded and all for and that, that was, and they could have kept him. They, they could have kept him. They could have because it was a salary dump too. Yep. But they could have kept him. Yep. That's kind of the biggest. But I, I got to yeah. tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for this team. I'm yeah. very excited. Yeah. I love what Danny Ainge did. I am very happy that Isaiah is gone. Very oh, happy. Yeah. Why? So you just didn't... I never was. I've never. Really? You no, know, I appreciated him a lot. I appreciated his play. Yeah. So don't get me wrong on that. Sure, sure. He fit into Boston really well. But for the love of God, I hated the cockiness and the ego that he brought with him. Well, get ready for Kyrie And he's Irving. still... Get ready I for don't think it's as bad. I don't really, really think it's as bad. All right. Like, Isaiah's still chirping about how much he has no respect for Danny Ainge for what he did. Oh, really? I have the world's most respect for Danny yeah. Ainge. By going out and getting Irving? Yeah. 
No, I still am shocked that this trade oh, that happened. Was crazy this is like Red Sox Yankees trading with each other. A little bit, yeah. The Cavaliers and the Celtics traded with each other. It's incredible to me. Still, well, one of your favorite players helped it ha made it happen. LeBron Jay James. LeBron James <laughs> yeah. and all that. Yep. So LeBron, enjoy as much as you want with Isaiah because he's not going to play till the second half of I the season. I guess, and that's the thing that kind of astonishes me too. They got, I mean, they got a pick. They got, and whether you thought we gave up too much for it, I don't know. Kyrie Irving is a really great player. He is. He is a fan. He is a fantastic player. He's easily top five if you can, like he and he's a guy who's won it and been in the clutch. Even last year, like watch the game he had against us. I think it was game four. Mm-hmm in the Eastern Conference Finals. Watch when LeBron is out and, like, we're what kind he does. of... What he yet? He bring, like... I we're going to see that this year. We're going to see a bunch of that. And I think yeah. he has a good supporting cast. I think in Cleveland, he had LeBron, and he had... Well, he had LeBron, and that's good, but it wasn't... I think there's a... And Kevin Love isn't bad, too, but there was a... There was kind of a drop-off. I think with... There's across Is this kind of like Kyrie's team now? I don't know. It might be Kyrie and Gordon's team. It might yeah. be that. I don't know. You think you think Irving will be okay with that? I don't know. I mean, it's also Al uh, Al Horford too. Horford. Does Al Horford become a better player now with this supporting cast? Uh, yeah, he's actually. I think so. I, I think so. There was a pass from uh, the last game they had against. I think it was the was it the Pelicans or the? Yes, yeah. it was the Pelicans. I think. Oh no, the Hornet. Uh, uh, Charlotte, I think. Char Bobcats. Yeah. Bobcats. Thanks. Um, Oh, yeah, because the, Horn the Hornets don't exist. It's just the Bobcats. I yeah. keep thinking. But they got their team back when they moved. Yeah. Crazy. But uh, there was a great pass from Kyrie to Al underneath. Yep. I just, remember seeing that. Yeah, it was like kind of just whips it in there. And who knows? Who knows? Like, And I think I did like about Isaiah from time to time. He, he could uh, he had a decent passing game. Mm -hmm. But I just like, I mean, I did like the story of Isaiah and just where it came from. But I don't know. In the playoffs against Washington, he was great. Mm -hmm. Against uh, Chicago, he was... Uh, Pretty good. Um, I don't know. That's tough. But Kyrie is just also watch the uh, game seven game against Golden State. Not this past year, but the year before. Even this season, even this series against Golden State, he did pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, and whether or not LeBron, well, LeBron had a decent one. Like the, it's tough because Golden State is it is tough. Yeah, they're a whole another level of weirdness. But I think. We have a good up and down team. Do the team. Celtics have enough firepower to rumble with the Cavaliers this year? Oh, can, yeah. the, can the Celtics oh, be the Eastern Conference champs? I, I don't know if they can, Okay, but they are maybe like one game away from either like taking that. Because I think last year they had the ability to take two games. Yep. I think they could easily, they could easily take three games now. So and, notice how I didn't you know. say, I didn't say oh, NBA championship. championship. Yeah, because I don't. Can we get past the Cavs? Because it seems like that's still the team to beat. I think our last team, last year's team, was a decent matchup against Golden State. Okay. And the reason why, because they could run people off the, the three-pointer. Correct. And I think, oh, well, thank you for validating it then, Nick. <laughs> uh, no, it is. That's how they were kind of designed to play. I, I, thought, defensively. I thought defensively they, they could have... Yeah. Done a nice job against Golden State. I think it would be interesting. In a long series. Two different type of two different teams with similar philosophies. Kind of uh, play good, uh, play great defense, mm -hmm. and shoot the three ball. Yep. And I think you will still have a bit of that. And I think defense will it'll come slowly but surely. And I think this team will gel around February. You'll be seeing hopefully a team that will look a top look like a top four team in the league. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. And I, li I like their thought on that. Well, I could be dead wrong. And it could, I don't think it will collapse. And maybe it will take longer to get there. Maybe it will take shorter to get there. But yep. Kyrie is a great player. Yep. Uh, Gordon Haywood uh, is a good player, too. I don't want to say great right now because I'm not as familiar with this game as much. But I'll, I'll see I think it. we'll learn. Yeah. I think we'll I think learn to see what, it. what it's like a lot. And I'm excited for Tatum because he's a guy. Yep. And we who, haven't mentioned Tatum. No, and he's yep. not getting a lot of press as one, rookie of the year kind of thing. He's a number three pick. And he's... And maybe he's being overshadowed by the fact that the overhaul and Kyrie Irving, Gordon Haywood. He, but he could be the rookie of the year. Yeah, he yeah. he can shoot. He I can think he's drive. the most talented of the three oh, that were drafted there oh, in, in the NBA. I do too. Jalen Brown is back for his sophomore season, and he's great. And our second unit, Terry Rozier, is awesome. Yep. Uh, and he will finally bloom, and we'll have... We won't have 80 guards anymore, so they'll be actually be able to be like... No more Kelly Olenek, no oh, more... Oh, but I love Kelly Olenek. I know yeah. you... Uh, Hey, I was a fan of all that. He had a I great was. game in the playoffs. 
against the Cavs, I believe, or no, no it was against it was, uh, Washington. Washington. Game seven. Game seven. He just he had like twenty six. Took it over twenty six points. Yeah. I have respect for Kelly. I have he, respect that he got the big money too. Oh, good for him. Yeah, to be honest. <laughs> He got the big money. Good for, good for him. No. Uh, no. He's with, um, is it Orlando? I think you're right. I yeah. think it's um, Orlando, the magic. Yeah. yeah. Actually, good for him. Yeah. It's weird because, like you said, getting he's the money. cashing it in. Oh, Tommy Heinsohn actually. Now we can get his hair cut. <laughs> hey. Or wear a man, I, I'm not a fan of a man bun, but he'll yeah. wear that or just do. Bun it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dudes and, dudes and buns. But Go green team. Go Celtics. Yeah, I'm before excited. We, before we wrap it, just want to ask you your thoughts on what happens this weekend for the Patriots. Oh, against the Jets, which is actually, someone had said the Jets don't the even know how to. J-E-T-S. Go Jets. Battle for Wrong. first place. Yeah. And they, the Jets don't know how to tank it. I don't know. Is it in New? Uh, is it in at Gillette? Or is I think it it's, it, it's in the middle lane. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's in the middle lane. I love those games because it's always a grinder. The app to get um, hookups between yes. males. Yes. Um, yes. No. Yes. Uh, no. It's it's always like a, a knockout brawl. They always are. The one talent be damned. You know. I think the Patriots need to be careful this weekend. Sure. And the they reason for being careful bit. is you you don't want to see Brady go landing on his butt anymore. This is a big. This is a telling game for me this week. Sure. The story needs to be told that the offensive line has to protect Tom Brady better. They are doing an abysmal job this season. He's been hit. Abysmal. Like he's on uh, pace to get hit more. You're going to have to put him in a stretcher ever. if he gets hit anymore. And he's 40 years old. Enough. I mean, they got to step yeah. it up. I don't know what's going on. I'm not loving this team right now. But they have some work to do. A lot of work. So I, I hope that they show up and play, play better. They need uh, another nice, solid defensive effort. Their last game that they had, which was the Panthers, correct? No, the last game they had was against uh, Tampa, but it feels like... Oh, Tampa, like, Tampa. But Excuse that was such me. a short week that yeah. it felt like... Because, I, yeah, I couldn't tell. That was not a very good game, Phil. I, 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 game. Didn't, I missed it. I was watching on my phone a little bit. Yep. And I listened a little bit on you the card. should have lost. It's right here from Nick Folk. Um, Nick Folk missed three field goals, yeah. and that would have very easily won the game. But to be fair, there were a lot of drop balls on um, the Patriots' side. Big time. That could have, you know, extended a drive or you know, created some points. So Big time. Hopefully they're in sync. That's what my hope is for Sunday, so we get a chance I, I, to watch. I never worry about those guys. I mean, come at me in January. Yep. That's, that's what I'll say. It's just kind of like the Yankees in the 90s. Like, Let's get healthy. Yeah. Healthy. Sure. Become a better team. That's my hope. Thank you very much for joining me today yeah, here on Face and Facts. It's nice to be back. We covered a whole lot of grounds here today. We got your Red Sox, your Celtics, and your Patriots covered and, of course, go Bruins. The Bruins open their season, too. And we'll talk about them more yeah. on the next episode that we have here for Face to Facts. For Nick Face. Phil Hewitt. We will see you next time on another episode of Face to Facts.